Act 10A is the introduction to economics. What I like about Act 10A is that it's a great introduction to economics if you're considering doing it as a concentration, but as the professors often remind you, it's a great introduction to being a member of society. The official name is Principles of Macro and Microeconomics. 10A will take you through microeconomics and the basics of how firms and people make decisions, and macroeconomics will look at the economy as a whole and break it down into bite-sized pieces. Act 10 should really be taken by anybody Typically, it's taken by first years who want to get a better grasp of economics, like if they want to concentrate in it perhaps. But honestly, even sophomores, juniors, seniors, if I'll take an Act 10 before, it's really a worthwhile class for everybody. Act 10 meets roughly four times per week. So you have two lectures on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10.30 to 11.45. You have what's called an economics and action seminar. And that was actually my favorite part of the course because it gave me a chance to hear from other professors in the Harvard Economics Department, which is one of the foremost in the world. Essentially what it is, is other professors from other courses come and give a one hour kind of spiel on their course and why you should take it. And the last component of Ec 10 is a section. Sections are led by graduate students in the Economics Department here, and they kind of help you learn more in depth those concepts and lectures that may have gotten just browsed over and um, really help you build those fundamentals up so you can do well in the problem sets and eventually on the exams. So what's so interesting about the Act 10A class is that it has multiple components. So within the class, one of my favorite things is that you participate in one or two debates, depending on the semester, with some of your classmates. So in the section component of the course where you work one-on-one -on -one in smaller groups with different, typically graduate level students, they'll organize the students in each section into small groups to do debates. Sometimes it's a 2v2 debate, sometimes a 3v3, but for the most part, they deal with real world economic issues that are happening every day that policymakers might debate. And the way that you frame the debate actually comes from the economic concepts that you learn in class. It's a lot of fun. You get to meet some of the people in your section, and you'll actually learn a lot about economics and its applications to the real world. I definitely have some pretty poor memories of some of the Ec 10 P sets. They're due every single Monday, and there's two components. One of the components is a multiple choice test based off the reading. So if you do the readings, you're probably fine. The nice thing about the MyLab is that it's, you get two tries. So if you kind of miss it the first time, you get a second crack at it. And then after you complete that multiple choice portion, there's a free response portion. On that portion, you can kind of work with your friends. And that's super helpful because Harvard's a place where collaboration is really celebrated. So the Ec 10 essay is one of the smaller components of the course. But it's really an opportunity for you to show your creativity and your inquisitive nature because the Ec 10 essay is really open-ended. You can write about whatever you want as long as it's within the confines of economics. So it's a two-page paper uh, that you're given about two weeks to write and during that time you research a topic you want to learn about a little bit and you try to find an economic basis for what you want to write about and at that point you kind of have free uh, like ability to write about whatever you want. For me that was money laundering. I got to write about how people in the United States are able to take advantage of the system and uh, laundered money and how common it is, how prevalent it is. So I firmly believe that both courses are great. Uh, I personally am enjoy, enjoyed microeconomics more because I have some interest in economic psychology and the course more directly deals with how specific firms might act in game theory. But for most people, I think both courses are very instructive and very helpful. Uh, I recommend that you take both because you'll have an incomplete understanding of economics if you only learn microeconomics or only learn macroeconomics. So I think it's great to take them take both courses and to take them in tandem one after the other. Additionally, the professors structure the class to build off of one another, and they teach some micro concepts in macro and some macro concepts in micro. So I think that you'll be missing out on really crucial parts of your understanding of economics if you only take one. So it really depends on what you're interested in, if Ec 10A or Ec 10B is better for you. But honestly, you won't really know what you're interested in unless you try both. My recommendation would definitely be to try both of the courses. Ec 10A is more of a microeconomics focus, meaning it's more about the individual companies in the market, whereas Ec 10B is more about the overall GDP, uh, the global market. So if you want to learn more about overall finance, then maybe Ec 10B is more for you. But also Ec 10A is a little bit of a flavor of individual markets competing. So at the end of the day, try both. You figure out what you like more, continue on after that. But if you are interested in economics at all, um, definitely just start with Act 10A, move on to Act 10B, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. Microeconomics and macroeconomics are really two sides of the same coin. I think most students have a preference. Like for me, I just much preferred macroeconomics to microeconomics. 
but it's really hard to understand some of the concepts in, that you really take for granted in macroeconomics. Like in a macroeconomic model, you kind of take it for granted that all of the actors in the labor force are simultaneously optimizing, you know, reaching the equilibrium point. Whereas in X10A, you really get a chance to look underneath the hood and see how that actually works on an individual basis before then extrapolating it out to a macro scale or businesses, firms, entire countries, even the entire world. Um, so I think it's, it's great to kind of learn like inside and then out to take 10A and then 10B. So if you're planning to take X10, my advice to you is to get as much out of you can, as you can out of the course. So X10A has a lot of different components, which you've heard a lot about from like two amazing professors, section leaders that have all done on their own very impressive things. You get to have office hours with all of these section leaders, the professors, the debates, every aspect of X10A is fleshed out in its entirety. So I encourage you to enjoy it as much as you can and to take advantage of the resources that are given to you and have as much fun with it as you possibly can. Whether you think you're gonna go like graduate school for economics or you think that it's the only econ course you'll take, I think that you can learn a lot as a member of society or as a potential economics concentrator by taking the course. So just enjoy it as much as you can. So economics is, uh, Act 10 is a really interesting course because it's just completely introductory. That means you really need no prerequisites to come in and take it. For me, I took uh, AP Microeconomics in high school, so I feel like that helped me a lot. But uh, professors David Lapson and Jason Furman, they do a great job of making sure that it's accessible to everybody. So in preparation, just make sure you read the Wall Street Journal a little bit. Uh, make sure you keep up with the times. But other than that, as long as you have a burning knowledge to learn and you're looking for a fun class to meet a lot of people, uh, you can do whatever you want to prepare for Rec 10, but you're going to like it either way. I think this advice would apply to pretty much any class at Harvard or any university more broadly, but it's to read the textbook. That's a really big differentiator to be able to kind of learn the material before class and then you get into class, you can kind of just reconsolidate what you've already read. So just read the textbook and the class should be a breeze.